Hi, I've got the Verizon 5G home internet. That guy. And in this video, I'm gonna set it up, test it, and see what's what. So currently they're offering two plans, 5G Home and 5G Home Plus. They might still not be available everywhere in the United States, but I can easily check to make sure they're available in my area before even considering them. So the Plus one is probably better, but at the same time more expensive, right? Yes, and that's why I signed up for the uh, 5G Home, not the Plus one, for now. If you're already a Verizon mobile user, then you might be getting a very good discount. If you're not, like me, then you would be paying $50 a month with auto pay for the 5G Home. And this price is guaranteed not to change for two years. For the 5G Home Plus, you would be paying $70 a month with auto pay. And this price is guaranteed not to change for three years. Just quickly wanted to say that in order to have the most accurate and up-to-date information, definitely check with Verizon first because all the information that I mentioned and probably I'm going to mention later in this video can change really fast. So definitely ask Verizon for the most accurate and up-to-date information about their plans and speeds and so on and so forth. All right, back to the video. Unfortunately, there is no information about the bandwidth or speed of each plan here. So I had to call them and then I was told that I should expect up to 300 megabits per second download speed for the 5G Home and up to 1000 megabits per second download speed for the 5G Home Plus. But when you dig a little bit deeper, you realize it is more complicated than that. Because it looks like your speed will also depend on the type of equipment that Verizon is going to send you. For example, I got the Verizon Internet Gateway, but they also have a 5G Internet Gateway. So for example, if I sign up for the 5G home plan and I have this device, then as you can see based on the Verizon website, I should expect download speeds between 85 and 300 megabits per second and upload speeds around 10 megabits per second. But if I have the 5G internet gateway, then even though the download speed is not going to be any faster, the upload speed can be around 50 megabits per second, which is a lot faster. Now, if I sign up for the 5G Home Plus plan, then this device is going to give me pretty much the same speed as here. But the other one's download speed could be up to 1000 megabits per second. So my plan is 5G Home and they sent me the Verizon Internet Gateway. Based on their website, that pretty much means as far as the speed goes, I should expect to see those numbers, right? We'll get to that later, but first let's set up the system. Setting up the Verizon 5G Home Internet Gateway is easy. I just need to plug it into a power outlet and if everything is fine, after a few minutes, I should get a solid white LED light. My first attempt though gave me a solid red light, which means there was something wrong. I actually had put the Verizon router somewhere in the middle of the house, where my wireless router was previously located. This is usually the best spot to install a wireless router, because this way it can have a better coverage. However, with the Verizon router, it's a different story. Because this device is actually a 5G modem and a wireless router combined together. Here it is probably gonna perform best as a wireless router, but not necessarily as a 5G modem. Because chances are here the 5G network might not be very strong, and as a result, it might not even be able to connect. And that was exactly what was happening to me. And that's why Verizon is suggesting to set it somewhere close to a window to make sure the 5G signal is strong. But as you probably have guessed by now, this is not necessarily a good place for the other side of it, which is a wireless router. Luckily, there is also a solution for that and we're going to talk about it later in this video. Now, after I get the solid white light, I can use the default Wi-Fi to connect. The name and password of the Wi-Fi is written on the bottom of the device. Now obviously I don't want to use this default Wi-Fi and password as my personal Wi-Fi, so I need to make some changes. 
The default IP address of the Verizon router is 192.168.0.1 and I can use this in my browser to connect to its setup page. The default admin password is also written on the bottom of the device. In the home page, I can see some information such as the network status, public IP address, MAC address, and the software version. Wi-Fi settings is obviously where I can configure the Wi-Fi. By default, the band steering is enabled, meaning that the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi and the 5 GHz Wi-Fi will have the same names and passwords. If I want them to be different though, then I should disable it. This is similar to the Wi-Fi Smart Connect feature which I've already talked about in another video. So feel free to check it out if you want to know how it works and whether you should use it or not. I personally like to have two separate wireless networks, so I just keep it disabled for now. This is a Wi-Fi 6 router, but it looks like for the 2.4 GHz band, the Wi-Fi 6 feature is not enabled by default. I can enable it here if I need to. I can have only one guest Wi-Fi, and that could be only a 2.4 GHz network and not a 5 GHz network. There is a parental control feature, but it is very limited and I can only use it to schedule internet access time. And that's it. In the network tab, I can see the map of the network, the status of the network, and my monthly and daily internet usage. Now in the LAN settings, I can change the IP address of the LAN, set up the DHCP server, and enable the IP pass through, which is something very important and I'm gonna talk about it later. In the device settings, I can change the default admin password, which I'm gonna do, or even manually check for any firmware updates. In the security tab, I can take advantage of some but limited firewall features, such as the SPI firewall, dust protection, WAN or LAN block ping. There's also IP MAC binding and access control, which allows me to whitelist or blacklist some clients. There is a quality of service too, which doesn't have any advanced features. It is actually only a bandwidth limiter. Okay, now that I have an idea how the configuration and setup process is for the Verizon Internet Gateway, let's do a Wi-Fi range test. I'm actually gonna compare its Wi-Fi range with my own wireless router, which is an ASUS RTAX86U. I've already tested that router in that video and I know how great its Wi-Fi range is. But will this one be able to beat that? Let's find out. In this test, a Wi-Fi analyzer device is used to check the signal strength or RSSI of both frequencies of the routers in three different places of my house. To make sure the test is as fair as possible, the routers will be installed in the exact same location and will use the exact same Wi-Fi channels. And of course, I'll test one router at a time to make sure they're not interfering with each other. And here's the results, and as you can see the ASUS RTAX86U was better in each and every place. Okay, so I would say the Verizon Internet Gateway has an okay range. It's not very good, it's not that bad either. But if I have a good wireless router like this one, then how about if I only use the Verizon Internet Gateway as a 5G modem, and not as a wireless router, and then connect my wireless router to it, hmm? This will have at least two advantages. First of all, this way I get to use my own wireless router, which not only has a better Wi-Fi range, but it is also packed with tons of useful features that they don't exist there. Also, this way I can keep the 5G modem close to a window or wherever I know the 5G signal is strong. And then keep the wireless router here to make sure the Wi-Fi coverage is great too. There is however one disadvantage, because this way there are two NAT devices in my network, or in other words double NAT which is not good. So before doing this I should somehow configure the modem to be in the bridge mode, or in this case enable the IP pass through. So if I enable the IP pass through mode, then this device will no longer broadcast any wireless networks. Also the LAN 1 port will no longer provide any internet access. The LAN 2 port will be the IP pass through port and I should connect my wireless router to this port.
Alright, we finally got to the interesting subject of a speed test. But first I should point out that speed is something that will depend on many variables here. For example, we already mentioned uh, the type of equipment that I have or the type of internet plan that I signed up for. But it will also depend on the quality of the 5G connection in my area and at the time of testing the speed and the quality of my local area network as well. For example, if I'm running the speed test on a laptop which is connected to my network. So long story short, whatever numbers I see in my speed test is going to be very unique to my situation here and it doesn't mean everybody should see the same numbers. Now in order to bypass my local network and make sure it is not affecting the speed test, I run the test on the wireless router which is directly connected to the 5G modem. So I've been using this internet service for almost a month now and I've probably run hundreds of speed tests so far. There were times that the upload speed was very close to 300 megabits per second. There were other times that it was even less than 100 megabits per second, maybe around 90, 95 megabits per second. But for the most part, I would say it's been between 150 and 250 megabits per second. The upload speed though for me usually has been around 15 megabits per second. Now, the question is, why did I even switch to the Verizon 5G home internet? Well, in the United States, when you want to shop for an internet service for your house, you usually have only one solid option. Or at least that was the case for me wherever I lived. That pretty much means there is not much competition in the ISP world. And when there is no competition, that single provider can pretty much do anything they want. For example, unreasonably increase their prices or just provide a bad internet service. But unfortunately, the customers can't do anything about it because they have no other options. That's why I got really excited when the 5G home internet became available here because it looks like finally there is a competition which is great and I think it can benefit us as home internet users. So I decided to give it a try and see if this could be a reliable and solid internet service at least here where I am. And I figured I should first start with the cheaper plan and test it for a while and then decide whether I should upgrade or not. So I've been using this for almost a month now and I think for me the only disadvantage is the fact that unfortunately I cannot expect to have a certain bandwidth available all the time and as we saw my download speed would be between 85 and 300 megabits per second. I just wish it was much closer to 300 rather than somewhere in the middle. Hopefully as the 5G network gets stronger and better that could be fixed. Other than that, I really like that there's no annual contract and you can cancel whenever you want. There's no data cap either, which I think is huge because usually with cable companies, if you want to have that option, you got to pay extra. It also comes with some perks. For example, this is what they're offering right now. So I'm going to keep on using it for now and monitor my download and upload speed and everything else. And in case anything major happens, I'm going to update you in a part two video. All right, that was pretty much it. And I hope you liked it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you again and I will see you next time.